Hi everyone, I am Lei Lunas from Philippines. Thank you so much organizers of the State of the Map 2020 online for giving me this opportunity to share my mappy hobby. So my topic is about drones for community mapping in the Philippines. Drones are powerful tools in data collection and I will be sharing my experience as a pilot and what I can contribute in OSM and in the mapping community if given more opportunities in the future to fly drones. I am a member of Philippines Flying Labs, which is part of We Robotics Flying Labs network that builds on local expertise for local solutions. I am also a member of GeoLadies PH. We advocate in community diversity, collaborative participation, and affirmative spaces for women in underrepresented communities in OpenStreetMap and in geospatial science. So we are helping in hosting mapping activities that we support, such as mapping violence against women and children centers and desks with the Department of Social Welfare Development, Mapa Babae, Mental Health Facilities, Humanitarian Open Street Map Team, Map the Philippines, OSM Map Paaralan, and LGBT Safe Spaces, which my friend Miko Tamura will share tomorrow. So we attended and facilitated basic drone training for women and underrepresented community with Philippines Flying Labs and GMAPs. In the Philippines, there are only 8% of certified pilots that are women. So my hope would be someday I can encourage women to pick up a drone and start flying. Uh, the Rice Terraces of the Philippines Cordillera is an outstanding example of an evolved living cultural landscape that can be traced as far back as 2,000 years ago in pre-colonial Philippines. Batad, this area, belongs to the Ifugao Rice Terraces cluster inscribed in the UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1995. In 2001, it was placed under list of World Heritage Site in danger but then removed in 2012 from the list since the Philippines government implemented more conservation efforts and established a more sustainable support system for the cultural sites. So it is 400 kilometers away from Manila, 12 hours dive, land trip, and they belong to the Ayangan Ifugao Ethnolinguistic Group. The main source of livelihood is farming, and 65% of the households residing in Batad are below the poverty threshold. Another cool fact, this is where Thanos retired after wiping half of life in Marvel Universe. I was able to map this area because I am part of the research team of this thesis. It's, uh, it's characterizing factors of landscape sustainability, the case of Batad Rice Terraces. It was published in University of the Philippines Diliman, and the authors, I hope they are watching me now, architect Edra Belga and architect Faith Varona. So the goal was to identify measurable changes in the cultural ecosystem through the years with its growing tourism business. So basically, is there a balance between cultural preservation and tourism in the small remote area? While, the date, while I data collect images, the rest of the team surveyed 80, 80 plus participants, local and foreign tourists, residents, and community leaders. Before we get to fly the drone, uh, we got the proper permits and requests from the government, like the governor, mayor, and community leaders. It's very important for them to understand that the data we will be getting shall be shared to them as well. So we surveyed this in May 2019, and then I came back last February 2020. I used DJI Phantom 4, and I used the Pix4D Capture app. Oh, this is Nana I learned this, by the way. 
She is my guide. She is my spiritual mother. As a result, we were able to produce high-resolution imagery in the digital elevation model for the analysis. This is, I think, maybe eight, nine, sorry, nine or ten centimeter resolution. It's approximately 1.3 square kilometers, and I took 560 photos in 2019. Um, the photos on the left side are taken not necessarily in the exact location, position, sorry, exact position, um, but you can clearly see the GI sheet obstruction that prohibits me to enjoy this view. This one. That's just in one year. And from the imagery, you can identify which houses are traditional or native. This one. And which are modern using GI sheets. Uh, more houses prefer the GI sheets now in building new houses because first, uh, they can house, uh, they can host the tourists there. It's a form of income generation for them as well. It's bigger in size and it's big and it's better for bigger families. And the third one, there are limited resources, uh, rather limited native materials available in the area due to land conversion. Here's a 3D video that I rendered using Pix4D. Ten years ago, I remember, it took me more than three hours to reach the main village. This one. And now it only took me around 45 minutes to reach that part. And two hours to hike back up to the main road. Yeah, there's a very amazing falls there that everyone should visit. It's pretty cool. Okay, uh, so the output, as I've said, uh, said before, it's Orthophoto, DSM, and DTM. All of them I uploaded in Open Aerial Map. So we were able to update the buildings by digitizing the houses, the roads, and water bodies in OSM. And um, the base map that we produced was printed and used in the Tourism Information Center. And also, we provided another map in the health center where they map out the household health status and location. So before, it was just handwritten. So now they, were, can able, they are able to use the updated map. So the next part is using drones in mapping an urban community. This was possible by proper coordination with the community leaders in Lupang Arenda, OpenStreetMap Philippines, and a couple of drone volunteers. So it took us two days, three drones, 10 flights, 1.43 square kilometers total survey area, a 5 cm resolution for the ortho and DSM, 10 cm for DTM, 15 hours for processing time, and 736 images. The goal was to provide a high resolution aerial and street view imagery of Lupang Arenda to the barangay or the community. For a very densely populated area, it is very difficult to identify buildings just using satellite imagery. So this really helped the community a lot, and especially the validators. So the output, as I've mentioned, orthophoto digital elevation models. And it's easier to digitize features like roads, buildings, and other facilities. 
you can see the text written in one of the buildings. You can still you can also see a flooded part of the road and look how crispy the edges of the buildings and even the cars and the pedestrian lane. You can clearly see them. So this is what it looks like. The orthophoto, DSM, and then DTM. Closer look. And zoom in version. So DTM looks like a blob. I, I uploaded this on Open Aerial Map. So you just open in ID Editor or JOSM. And then you can automatically use this as your base map when you're digitizing in OSM. You, as you can see, uh, it's very, it's much better to digitize in a very high-res image than the satellite one. Okay. So um, I share this with Open Aerial Map. So it's it's very a good opportunity that other people in the mapping community in the Philippines can explore the data. So this 3D rendering was made by Sir Maning Sambale and then another one from Sir John Louis Fabula. He was able to play around the DSM that I posted on Open Aerial Map. Some other communities that I was also able to map using drone. This is in Malapasco Island in Cebu. Um, this was with uh, Ram Philippines, SRDP, and Philippines Flying Labs. So it took me 20 minutes to survey the area. This is two square kilometers, and I use EV Sense Fly, so it's faster. So the output that we produced, the same as before, orthophoto, digital surface, and digital terrain models, and contour, we were able to give them to the local community, the community leaders, and our partners. Okay, so this is also in, this is in Sulu, Sulu Island, Holo, in the southern part of the Philippines. A few months after visiting this area, a local church was bombed by terrorists. So it's very uh, nice that we were able to map out there, this part of town, uh, before it was hit. And then in Apayao, Ifugao, we were able to provide the Municipal Disaster Risk Management Division a high-resolution imagery of disaster-prone areas and show crop destruction after they were hit by Typhoon Mangkut. Okay. Uh, sorry, I also uploaded this foundation university in Dumaguete in Open Aerial Map. I used Open Drone Map to generate this image in DSM and DTM. Okay. So I hope after this COVID pandemic ends, I will be going to remote areas in the Philippines or anywhere and continue providing high resolution images to the people in the community. So thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed. I'm track to you that is now live streaming. They're just about 12 minutes behind schedule. Um, but um, so Lint, I've got the, I think you've been answering yourself. Um, but yeah, so Andy asked, um, yeah, are you heard? Uh, No, I did upload this in Open Aerial Map. Cool. And I think you shared the link and shared a few links there, which is wonderful. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, 
So then uh, someone's asked, I mean, this is technical for me, but do you want to talk about um, how you produced ETM and using it for me? Uh, how do you produce? Uh, how do you produce DTM? Are you using? Yes, I use Pix4D to generate DTM. So it's pretty straightforward. I didn't do any calculation whatsoever. So just produced it as part of its output as deliverables. And is there an open pro open source software? Yes. Um, you can also use Open Drone Map. Yes, uh, it's a series you can. Use Open Drone now. You can use that as well for free. And do you have the visual button? Yes. Um, so number four, I uploaded this on Open Area Map, so you can access it. Okay. So that's the imagery. I don't know if they were. Maybe they were asking about the. Did you produce some maps as well, or it's just the Erlen imagery, isn't it? I'm sorry. Um, oh no, sorry, I think I got confused. So, um, question five was a question I wanted to ask as well. That you seem to be engaged a lot with the local communities. Um, do you want to talk about their reaction to you creating this aerial imagery in the mapping? Uh, yes, actually during my first field work, their impression of drones, they're usually very noisy. <laughs> so that's what that's the community first impression. So we had to explain that we're doing this as part of the mapping as a research for their community. So and after we explained it, so okay, so it's cool. We're okay with that. And then the output usually we provide we provide them the output and we explain to them um, what our uses of high resolution imagery or the maps that we produce for them. Uh -huh. So that then helping you, are you then able to go to other areas and show them the maps you've produced to then encourage new areas to be happy for this? I'm sorry. Hello. Does the um does the kind of um once you produce imagery for one area, does that help? Could you because you can show that to a new area and explain um explain why you're doing it? Uh, I didn't get the question. Oh. Sorry. Uh, okay, I think we're, we're, there's a bit of struggle with connection. Uh, doing this yeah. Um, what about the privacy concerns? In question six. Uh, yeah, in number six. Um, for ten centimeter, yeah. Um, we weren't able to identify. It's not that sharp to identify people's faces. Okay. Um, so, so that answers that. Um, and yeah. someone was asking about: Is this um, manual? Is the manual work of um, removing it to to get the PGM of elevation? Uh, as as I've mentioned before, I. Uh, there's no, we didn't manually remove the um, the buildings or the houses, so it was automatically uh, removed by the software I used to process this, which was fixed for you. Okay, so I inter, uh, I was speaking. Uh, I'm talking about the maps uh, in Batad, the first, the first one that I showed. Yeah, but I think if you also, we also use Open Zone Map, and uh, I'm not sure if um, rally or sir, sir Maning is there, but I think in DPM they also removed it um, automatically by the song. 
So does that mean it kind of smooths it so you see the hills and you don't pick up the the buildings don't look like hills then? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it does. And if you also check one of um, one person from geospatial community in the Philippines, he made another suggestion to how to smooth in BTM. I'm, I'm not sure if I, I can share the link of his post here. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think you talked about privacy already, but it's not um, it's not detailed. Um, do you use, yeah, do you use any um equipment to adjust the positioning or is it just a GPS on the drone? Uh, no, it's just uh, it's just a phantom. No, I did not use anything like that. Um, there's a this is a fun question. Uh, how do you choose <laughs> what locations or project you do to your drone imagery, um, and what's going to be next? Um, no plans yet. Hopefully, we get more collaborations in the future that involves remote areas in the Philippines so we can provide them high-resolution images for mapping. That's that's the goal. But right now, uh, we don't have it yet. Uh, I mean, uh, in terms of Philippine Science Labs, you ladies, and Ministry of Mapping. So that's... Uh looking for people that want your services to kind of help send you to those places. Is it? So, sorry, what? I didn't understand that. Um, so you're currently waiting for people to kind of want you to do the imagery and to support you traveling and in your time? Yeah, yeah. We hope to um, we get more collaborations in the future. Oh yeah. Um, so that's the questions um, on the pad. Um, we've got if I got throughout the time. We've got about twenty minutes um, before the next talk. Um, so I don't know if there's anything else you want to add or mention. Um. I guess um, that's it, and probably uh, I'd like to promote our fellow Filipino presenters. They will be presenting tomorrow, so I hope everyone will watch watch them. I can also share the link in this um, session pad. Great, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, I think I've I noticed the um, Philippine community have been very active in Instagram and Twitter, sharing when other people are um, talking um, and promoting each other's talks. So I think that's really nice to see um, in this open street map community that we, um, yeah, we get to share. You've got your local community supporting you amongst the international mapping, um, and discussing about what you do. Um, mm. Well, oh, there's a few more questions coming in while we've still got time. Um, um, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure I quite understand that one, but um, how or how complex is it to geo-reference the photos from the drone imagery? Um, okay, so the photos that I take when I fly a drone, usually, they usually have a lot um GPS data, like um, X and Y and Z data. So it's just, um, it's not really that complex as long as it has that values and you that, that is enough for you to input in the processing software. And additional, if you want to be more accurate, I guess I have to do a GPS survey, something like that. And for the cost, it depends on the drone that you plan to buy, but I'm not sure I'll, how many. 
Cool. Um, yeah, so I think we'll just I'll ask one more question. Um, then we'll um, finish the video here and uh, there'll be a bit of break before the next talk. So um, just for people that want to learn to fly a drone and do similar things to you, um, I think someone's pointed out you might kind of be a role model. Do you have any message for anyone who might want to um, around the world kind of learn to fly drones? Um, go and fly. <laughs> Great. Be overwhelmed with the technical of it and just enjoy. Cool. Um, so, yeah, go and fly <laughs> and enjoy it. Um, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and